welcome back. So first up for the second half of the week, I got the air conditioning system flushed and then uh, put some extra oil in the compressor and then the guys were charging it up. And as you can see, the AC unit turned on once they put enough of the R134A in there. And this is just when it's starting out right now, so 70 degrees and coming down. And uh, see how it's gonna turn out. So as you can see there, they got the needles in the green where they're supposed to be got the engine running it, it I've got it set up to bump about 200 extra rpm when the AC is on when it's in idle so it's idling there just under 1200 rpm I think we're already 1150 rpm and as you can see temperature is coming down there nicely 49 degrees coming out of the vent there oh, yeah, you got it down. and now 46, 46 so coming down yeah, that's really, that's perfect. and ultimately we ended up getting it down to um, 36 degrees as you'll see here so pretty happy with how that's working and uh, I don't think there was any uh, contaminant in the line at all so when we flushed it out really nothing came out. So anyway that's good and that job done. So after last time you saw me cleaning up the brackets there that hold the nose gear or the fork onto the main uh, strut. So the next job was to uh, align everything and then um, you know put that retaining compound on there and then tighten up all those bolts. So here I'm pulling a plumb bob uh, off the nose of the aircraft and just marking a uh, line there on the floor with some tape and I've already done the same thing uh, at the rear of the aircraft using the uh, main bolt there that holds the, um, or that's the centering bolt there for the propeller. And how I did it this time was a little bit different than how I did it last time. I ended up just basically putting two extra bits of tape there that were uh, on that same line that I pulled you know when I pulled the cable there which you'll see here shortly and then I used my straight edge on the wheel and made sure that it was parallel uh, on the front edge of the straight edge and also sort of further back on the straight edge so last time I actually just did measurements to see uh, if it was lined up but this time I decided it was better just to do it parallel so here you can see I've got the first bit of tape there closest and there's my wire there being held down by my heavy bag and so got those all lined up on the cable uh, which is taut you know from front to back and once that's done I can just move the cable out of the way and I've just got my marks on the on the floor there and so uh, how I'm going to do it is I'm going to take this uh, my little t-square there and just measure that has a, a millimeter scale there on the bottom there on the floor and with it held sort of flat on the floor there I can measure and see how many millimeters it is from the inside of the straight edge to uh, the tape and just make sure it's the same on the front and the back and initially it was a little bit off from where I had it before because uh, I just sort of light, you know, lightly uh, bolted everything into place. So here I'm using the primer um, that comes with this Loctite, the retaining compound and you just put some on there and that just helps the uh, retaining compound uh, stick better and also set up a little bit more quickly. It's still a a 24 hour for maximum strength type setup so I was going to do this and then uh, you know allow it 24 hours for it to, to set up because the last time you know when I had the shimmy problem I didn't know for sure but I was fairly uh, certain that this whole bracket stuff had slipped because my alignment wasn't exactly the same uh, after the the shimmy happened um, so anyway goal is here to try and get this thing so it doesn't move because if it moves while there's a shimmy going on it's just going to make it worse because uh, then it will be out of alignment so there I'm putting that uh, retaining compound on there and it's got about 20 minutes on there before it starts to harden at all so you know I was a bit under the clock here didn't have you know too much time to mess around before it would start to harden so I had to put it on both of these little sides um, of these clamps and also yeah, on the inside there that goes against the um, the strut itself and put a fairly decent amount on there it's a fairly tight fit so you know it's gonna probably squeeze out anyway and then so I just rested those on the top there with one bolt in each holding them in place and now I'm putting the same thing the primer on the bracket there for the lights because that's what touches the other side of the flange there that's um, attached to the main strut so and everything else doesn't move because uh, these ones all have uh, close tolerance bolt holes it's the 
the uh, flange on the strut there that has the larger uh, slotted holes. So whatever's touching the bottom of the flange and whatever's touching the top of the flange is what needs the retaining compound. So obviously on the top was those little brackets I did just now and then on the bottom is um, this bracket that holds um, the taxi and landing lights in place. So again putting a fairly decent amount on there and then I slid that in between the uh, fork and the um, the flange there on the strut and then put the bolts in there and sort of snugged it up enough and then quickly checked the alignment again uh, using my straight edge and then when that was all aligned nicely uh, tightened everything up quickly so I don't know if you can see that but I think it was 78 millimeters there from um, the straight edge there and then down the front ended up getting it exactly the same 78 millimeters so it should be nicely aligned uh, so that's that job done and ready to sort of do a test there and you can see also got rid of the powder coat uh, anywhere that was around the bolts and the washers and things like that because that would just that was just compressing before when I tightened up the bolts so I got rid of all that and uh, there's still powder coat in between the light bracket and the fork and also the toe bracket and the fork but it's a big area there so it shouldn't be a problem and so the next morning while I was waiting for uh, that bracket to set up completely I decided to put the armrests on and these just sort of temporarily on I didn't put the that handles in for opening but now I've got the one there on the left side and also uh, did the one on the right side so now when I'm doing taxi testing I can uh, rest my elbow on there uh, for the side stick and I also installed the uh, little um, hour gauge there that I had on the test stand a while back so I can keep logging the hours on the engine this is just in the in the um, baggage compartment there and that's all hooked up so once that nose gear had time to set up and uh, now that I got the air conditioning working nicely I uh, decided it was time to take the aircraft out a little bit and I was just gonna take it really slow and, and you know just slowly work my way up and wanted to try a few different things I wasn't going to push it that hard and so here I'm just taxiing down and uh, getting on I think it's Alpha taxiway onto runway 23 so not going all the way to the end and uh, excuse the uh, wind noise I had the camera there the one that you're looking at there didn't have the case on it there so it's picking up a lot of wind noise just when you're taxiing along I'm not sure how well you'll hear that but anyway it's there so the other thing I did on that nose gear too is I put some tape across the joins, two different sections of it across the joins there. So, and I just cut it with a um, with a Stanley knife there, and uh, that way I was going to be able to see if um, it actually moved uh, after the fact, because uh, I was still you know thinking oh well I've got a new tire on there, I'm running lower pressure. I was only running 32 psi in it. And I've tightened up uh, everything in the nose front end, so I was hoping that you know potentially that might fix the shimmy problem. But obviously, Mark's still working on the new shimmy damper design. Um, so I just t took it real slow here. Didn't you know give it anything close to full throttle? Just slowly started getting moving here. And the other thing I was I tried here, you'll see from the outside camera that I was putting in some aileron just to see um, you know what sort of uh, response I was getting so watch that spade there on the right side of the screen and you'll see uh, me you know putting in a bit of up aileron down aileron you know left and right uh, but anyway I didn't get that fast up here as you'll see ended up getting up to just 40 miles an hour this time and uh, then you can see me working the aileron there a little bit just to see what's going on and then all of a sudden I uh, got the shimmy back again as you'll see here so there it goes it's not as bad as what it was before but it's obviously still bad and so I immediately dropped the throttle I tried uh, pulling the elevator and then I ultimately just got on the left brake a little bit to bring it back to center line and of course it settled down again um, but you know it's back with a vengeance so I've got to try and fix this problem so I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second so I wanted to give you um, a different view. I don't know if you realize there or you saw there, but I had a camera this time mounted underneath, um, underneath the fuselage looking forward. So in a second here, you're gonna get to see uh, what that view looks like. And I also had a camera mounted in the nose that you'll see, I've got a bit of video of that as well. So this is again, just pulling out onto the runway. 
and uh, you'll see kind of you know it's fairly violent this shimmy but as you'll see in a minute I've got another solution I'm going to do while Mark's finishing off working on the, um, the shimmy damper um, thing that this actual strut as far as I know now from doing some research does have a built-in shimmy damper but I, I just don't think it's aggressive as, as much as what we need um, so anyway you'll see it here do the shimmy again and uh, you know it gets pretty violent but nothing got broken so at least that's uh, a plus I guess and again about 40 miles an hour and all of a sudden it just comes in and it's actually gradual this time just a little bit and then all of a sudden it goes crazy and if you slow-mo the whole thing you can see actually it, it came in slowly and then really got going but uh, no damage as I said and uh, if you're a little bit squeamish and you don't want to see something that's um, potentially violent you might want to close your eyes for this next little short clip coming up here uh, I had the camera mounted in the uh, nose compartment there looking on the gear so close your eyes right now if you don't want to see it so yeah that was pretty violent uh, anyway so this is what uh, we have right now if we switch into the CAD and after doing a little bit more uh, measuring and stuff I realized that there is actually enough room for me to get the strut mounted vertical at least um, for a test so right now you see there I think the angle that I have on is about 75 degrees from horizontal so um, about 15 degrees off of vertical and this is what it would look like um, if I orient the strut completely vertical that's the one in dark gray so it would end up lifting the nose up about 0.6 of an inch as well which is going to you know change the angle of attack on everything but if you look underneath here the fuselage you can actually see there is enough room there it doesn't come into contact with the opening in the fuselage so it is possible to do this and uh, the simplest way to do it is just to extend uh, the lower arms there from the retraction mechanism and I can do that just as an initial test just create a new one which isn't that complicated and test it like that and see if that fixes it and if, if it's still not fixed then we'll have to go with the new shimmy damper uh, add-on uh, but anyway so this is what it basically looks like um, in the vertical position there and this is the same as what all of the lands hairs have they all have it vertical and so these two arms here are what need to be extended so they made up their um, further back so I've got to add about an inch to the tubes there so I'm going to create um, a, a brand new setup here just for the bottom section so this is what the new tubes look like when they're joined up there and you end up with uh, what's kind of like a big N shape or something like that I guess so and then later on uh, I can modify this little arm here just move the hole a little bit closer down to where it rotates and that'll give it the extra throw that it needs uh, to bring it all the way up so but I won't do that until I know that this actually fixes the problem so uh, that's what it's going to look like there with the fuselage around it and uh, it's not going to take that long to do this I've ordered the the steel I need the 4130 and that'll be here on Monday uh, afternoon sometime so hopefully Tuesday morning I'll be able to zip up to Brits and do the uh, cuts and stuff that I need and maybe even uh, get it all welded up and so I'll be able to test it maybe as, as early as Wednesday and as I said if it doesn't work uh, getting it um, purely vertical like this then we're gonna have to go with this extra shimmy damper so but this is a quick fix it's not gonna take a lot of t time and not gonna take a lot of money and then uh, looking here at the sketch geometry uh, it didn't really change anything that much because that that arms a little bit longer it means that this thing has to um, the connection there to that uh, pivot arm there needs to be moved closer down to the pivot point as I said just now because the throw is only four inches coming out of the the hydraulic uh, cylinder there so uh, I need it to actually move further and so if I move it down closer to where it pivots it ends up going through a, a larger arc which ends up retracting the gear all the way so um, if it works out it's an easy fix overall and uh, it's just a matter of is it going to work so we'll have to wait and see uh, how that turns out.
and if you look over here you can see the difference in the length so this is the new length that one there and that's the old length there so it's a, about an inch longer it ends up being and this is the point up the top here where it ends up uh, when it's retracted or at least where the pivot point or the scissor point ends up when it's retracted so other than that everything else is pretty much the same and as I said the nose uh, the aircraft will end up being up about 0.6 of an inch taller up so I've got to uh, allow for that as well in terms of just making sure this thing is fully vertical but this section there that's uh, selected in blue that's what I end up having to create so it has uh, you know like tubes on either end of those tubes you know where the bolts go through and then it has uh, the two obviously the two tubes that connect there and then the cross brace there that square one that holds it all together and also um, locks it into the over center so uh, when the gear is down and locked it doesn't uh, come out of the locked position so easy fix um, and hopefully it is a fix and not just another attempt at it and the other thing I'm gonna to have to take into account is the lights here so this is what they look like um, on the old setup and now when the gears rotating um, like this is because it's moving uh, almost 15 degrees the lights are going to be pointing down like that so I'm probably ha gonna have to come and redrill the brackets for those lights and just rotate them a little bit uh, so they look more forward instead of down at the ground because uh, otherwise you know not going to light up anything very far ahead of you but you know that'll be after the fact if, if this fix works anyway so that's uh, what's going to be happening and uh, next week Monday and Tuesday and hopefully that sorts things out um, if not we'll be on to doing that new uh, the new shimmy damper uh, the, ex the external one as I said there is an in internal one that's kind of inside of that strut I don't know exactly you know how much force is putting on the damping uh, but you know it works good to about 40 miles an hour and then all of a sudden nothing so uh, this is the best I can do right now and we'll see um, maybe by this time uh, next week we'll have it actually working so that's the update for this week thanks again uh, for watching and tune in again next week and see how far I've got with this solution <laughs>